Hello everyone. Many of you uh, have probably seen or heard of the Queen's Gambit Netflix series, which is really popular right now because nothing good is coming out. And I, I personally love the show. And the thing that I love the most is the games that are played because I'm a chess player. And I'm sure you all are chess players. So I really, I would love to show you this game. Uh, and the final game is truly something to behold. So what makes it even more beautiful, actually, is that the actress Anya Taylor-Joy was playing a real game of chess with a generic Russian guy, and the director just used the game that they played, which is, I think, I think it's a fun piece of trivia that not a lot of people know. Uh, and they actually chose Anya Taylor-Joy specifically because she has an impressive FIDE rating of 2735. And so this was actually completely improvised, which I think was a, was a really brilliant decision. It makes it feel a lot more authentic. And I think you, you're about to see what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's get into things. The protagonist begins here with e4, the protagonist with the white pieces. And then we see e5 from Borgov, which is pretty standard so far. Uh, and here, Anya Taylor-Joy sank into deep thought and pondered her next move for about 12 minutes before finally playing a brilliant novelty in this position. Feel free to pause the game and think for a moment before I reveal the move. The move she played was king e2. So well done to those who found it. And for those who don't, why is this such a great move? Well, for starters, this mobilizes white's most valuable piece and aims to defend the e4 pawn here so that the center is entirely under white's control. And also notice how the queen is completely blocked in here. You often hear that you shouldn't bring your queen out too early. And I think this move really demonstrates why. If she had moved her queen out, perhaps to g4, then the king would have a much harder time protecting it, and we know how important it is to protect our queen. Now a lot of you may notice that king e2 means white is now actually unable to castle, which is normally an issue, but in this case it really isn't too much of a bother, because whatever the protagonist's name is, is trying to dominate the center, really trying to get back some early development and shake things up. We have moves like d4 coming, breaking apart black's weak central control, and white is able to gain rapid development. Usually the king isn't able to reach the center of the board until the very end of the game, but this move really proves that you need to stop thinking so conventionally, because whether the king should or should not be in the center is really down to a matter of playing style. So if we look at black's side, it's looking pretty dire, honestly. Uh, Borgov has only managed to move one piece so far, which is half of the number of pieces that Anya Taylor-Joy has moved. And also, if we notice the position of black's king, it immediately becomes clear that the king is unsafe. It is nowhere near the center of the board, so it's basically completely useless and just a <laughs> So it's basically completely useless, and it's really just a liability compared to the king on e2, which is definitely a strong asset. Also, black's light square bishop is completely unable to move here because of the pawns blocking it. In order to develop, black is going to have to waste time moving his pawns, valuable time, which could have been used to develop his king. Also, notice his rooks, which are in a very similar position to his bishops in that they are completely paralyzed by the cramped pieces. So in this position, Borgov resigned. Thank you for watching.